So today we're going to talk about um, expressive arts therapy. Um, just going to tell you a quick thing about my center, Art Relief. So we're an innovative and unique community wellness hub. Um, where cultural, culture and religious freedom, equity, inclusion, and diversity are valued and considered as strengths in our community. We specialize in wraparound community expressive arts and mental health services, training, and education. And since 2009, Art Relief has been servicing families and individuals across the lifespan at our center, in homes, in schools, at community programs, and in collaboration with intensive care medical programs. Although in the past year, it has been very limited in terms of being out in the community. Art Relief makes services easily accessible to low income individuals and families, individuals with disabilities and individuals suffering from chronic illness. So our services include outpatient expressive arts therapy and mental health counseling. We also have a therapeutic mentoring program um, we provide education, um, we create, we provide, we have creative community spaces, and we also rent out our space for related workshops and private events. So today we're going to talk about what expressive therapy means, where it comes from, um, what it is. We're going to talk about the difference between art in therapy and art as therapy. We'll, we'll briefly talk about the different modalities of expressive therapy and how they work um, and what is expressive arts therapy as a modality um, and how does expressive arts bear work um, and then the benefits of expressive therapy. I just so we'll start where, where does it come from? Um, so this is a quote from uh, Robert Landy and his book, uh, The Child, the Dreamer, the Artist and the Fool. Um, so through understanding, uh, sorry, through evidence on the walls of caves and ancient documents and depictions discovered on prehistoric pottery and in traditional ritual practices handed down over many centuries, it becomes clear that some thousands of years ago, Aboriginal people in all continents engaged in aesthetic forms of expression for myriad purposes to mark significant passages and transitions in the life of a community, to celebrate festive and solemn occasions, to express a feeling, to pray and worship and to heal the sick. So this idea of expressive arts therapy is an ancient one. That's a nice image to illustrate. <laughs> Um, in the 40s, veterans hospitals in the United States started to introduce art modalities as alternative treatment approaches. And in the 50s, early childhood educators in Europe were using the arts to promote child development. In the 60s, the walls separating studio artists and their communities began to fall. And in the 70s, formulation of an expressive arts approach to therapy started to appear. So it's a pretty young profession in terms of being a, a career or a profession. However, it's been around for quite some time. Today, this discipline is recognized internationally and nationally. It's used in a variety of settings, such as schools, hospitals, and all types of counseling agencies. So we're going to get into the definition. Um, expressive arts therapy, which is abbreviated sometimes by EXT, it's a multi-arts approach and an integrative, um, um, sorry, multi-arts approach and integrative approach to counseling utilizing verbal and nonverbal modes of expression. Natalie Rogers, who is um, a, 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 played a big part in the foundation of expressive therapy as a profession, wrote, the expressive inner, we express inner feelings by creating outer forms Expressive arts refers to using the emotional, intuitive aspects of ourselves in various media. To use the arts expressively means going into our inner realms to discover feelings and to express them through visual art, movement, sound, writing, or drama. It's an ex established health profession um, or service similar to, uh, you've probably heard of CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, or play therapy, or speech therapy, and occupational therapy. 
and it provides an alternative means of communicating for those who can't find the words to express anxiety, pain, or emotions as a result of trauma, loss of brain function, depression, anxiety, learning disabilities, verbal communication challenges, and other debilitating health conditions. So this is an image of, uh, painted by Frida Kahlo, who was an artist and who also suffered from a lot of medical um, um, challenges. Um, it's a self-portrait, self-portrait with thorn necklace and hummingbird um, that she painted in 1940. And this is a quote from her, the only thing I know is that I paint because I need to. So clearly in her, um, in her words, um, painting uh, was a necessity and a, an, a, an important part of her um, healing process. So a little bit more information about um, expressive therapy. So even though artistic skills can be gained from the experience of expressive therapy, one does not need to be trained as an artist to be successful in this type of therapy. And in contrast with what art made um, in a, an art class, um, uh, in an expressive therapy um, session or an expression, expressive therapy art expression is defined as a creation which articulates the client's life experience and moves him or her as well as the therapist into a new dimension where he or she will have more perspective and insight on that particular matter. So the focus is not the form of art or the product or the finish image, um, but rather the process that takes us there. So what's the difference between art in therapy versus art as therapy? So the difference is that it's, it's um, the therapeutic benefits of art are a con continuum. On one side, you have art that, that is therapeutic in itself. So you could be walking in a, in a beautiful garden, you could be watching an awesome movie, you could be um, at the museum looking at beautiful paintings and that in itself, um, there's been some research um, it has therapeutic benefits. It can decrease levels of cortisone in your brain. It can de-stress you. Um, it can help you relax. Um, it can help you focus. Um, so it, there's no, you know, there's no secret. Anybody who loves art uh, does know that it feels good to participate in some way, either in watching or making art. Now, the difference between that and expressive arts therapy is that only trained expressive arts therapists have the knowledge, training, and skills to use art in therapy as a tool to reach clinical goals. So um, rather than have this just open experience of art being beneficial, an expressive therapist will be able to, um, knowing what a goal is, to figure out what specific art form to use, how to use it, what material to use, uh, what pace to push the client, and when um, that goal will be met um, um, it, with the use of the creative process. Here's an example of um, something that can be experienced as therapeutic, just watching a beautiful sunset or sunrise. Um, I don't know if if you feel it, but just looking at that, I can feel some difference and changes within my own body. And here's an example where art is used as a clinical tool. Um, this was a, an art made, um, art piece made in a um, group for adults with epilepsy. And sometimes epilepsy can make it difficult to communicate in groups or um, communicate verbally. So the, the group started with a warm up where um, patients were um, asked or invited to create an art uh, representation of their inner landscape or how they feel right now. And then that experience allowed their body to arrive get in, and getting into the art material and um, engaging with the art mediums helped them relaxed. And then they had an image that um, supported um, how they wanted to communicate who they are in the group. And that in some way scaffolded and facilitated the, the verbal expression in the group. And here's a quote by Stephen Levine. The task of expressive arts therapy is not to eliminate suffering, but to give a voice to it, to find a form in which it can be expressed. Expression is itself transformation. This is the message that art brings. The therapist then would be an artist of the soul, working with sufferers to enable them to find the proper container for their pain, the form in which it would be embodied.
So what are the expressive arts therapy modalities? The most common ones are art therapy, music therapy, dance and movement therapy, drama therapy, and expressive arts therapy that it's its own modality. It's used in individual sessions with couples, families, and groups, and it's a person-centered, inclusive, and accessible approach. And by that, I mean that at anybody, um, whatever age you are, or at any developmental stage, whatever the, the um, neurological profile, whatever your ethnic or cultural uh, background, whatever language you speak, whatever communication style you have, um, our expressive arts therapy is accessible. And that's one of the most powerful qualities of this way to provide support. Um, it might be particularly helpful to clients who are pre-verbal, so um, children who have not access to language yet, or who are nonverbal, or who feel emotionally restricted, so are very withdrawn emotionally, in that it, it will help them access the unconscious. It will help them access things that they have a difficult accessing through language. Um, an expressive arts therapist will draw from specific artistic skills, as well as their training and education in evidence-based verbal and nonverbal counseling techniques. So when I went to school, I studied um, two tracks. We would say we have two tracks. We have the expressive arts track and we have the mental health counseling track. And I graduated with a certification in expressive therapy and um, my master's in mental health counseling and then later became a licensed mental health counselor. So we, we learn both at the same time. And then once we go into the field, it's a beginning process to try to integrate both into the work in different settings that don't necessarily know anything about expressive therapy and where we have to really create that from scratch. The creative process is skillfully used to stimulate the imagination, engage the senses, activate the breath, and get the body moving to improve psychological health, cognitive abilities, and sensory motor functions, and to reach specific clinical goals such as developing speech or overcoming trauma. I love this quote from Oliver Sacks, nothing activates the brain so extensively as music. Um, early on in my career, I worked in early intervention and very, very often because I was, I'm also a musician, I would be put on, on cases of children who had speech delays. And um, I really loved working with speech therapists because um, the, the, the music making and the, mu and the singing uh, allowed children to access language in a, in, in a different way. Um, because it, it activated different parts of the, different centers of the brain and producing or, or looking, having a goal to produce sound is different than having a goal to produce language, but at the same time, it really supports, one supports the other. Art making is inherently perceptually and sensory based, and it involves the brain and the body in ways that verbal language does not. By shifting from one art form for the other, from the other, we may gain deeper insight and transformative potential in the healing process. The concept of intermodal transfer, which was coined by Paolo Knill, distinguishes expressive arts therapy from its neighboring disciplines, such as art therapy, music therapy, dance therapy, movement therapy, and psychodrama. So expressive therapy utilizes the different art forms, and that's the, the primary difference is that um, and that's what I do. I'm an expressive arts therapist. My specialty and my training has to do with being able to be with a client and assess um, what is the best way in. Is it through movement? Is it through um, music? Is it through visual representations? And by understanding um, the cognitive functioning of my client and by understanding what is the path of least resistance for them to access their, their content, um, I can then suggest and guide the client into one or the other and also identify when that is no longer beneficial and then shift to something different. Um, an example of that was I had a client who was a dancer and initially I thought, oh, great, you know, dance will be a great way to come into the process. And it turns out that dancing was actually a bigger, big trigger. And so that was not going to happen. Movement was not her preferred 
um, way to enter into the process. And we ended up doing a lot of um, visual art and sensory art um, to activate the senses and to reconnect with parts of herself that um, she needed to disconnect to due to trauma. And then from there, um, we were able to shift to more dramatic play and recreate resolutions um, of her trauma through um, movement and dramatic play. So how does it work? How does expressive therapy work? We're gonna get into, more, into that a little bit more now. Um, so expressive therapy is a therapeutic space where one can exhibit and practice novel and adaptive behaviors. Um, so because we are engaging all parts of the brain and we're engaging the senses, um, we can, um, we have an opportunity to look at behavior, not as something to modify, but as a space to practice and explore. It's a little bit like a laboratory. Um, communicate aspects of memories and stories that may not be readily available through conversations. So if you're expressing yourself artistically through different mode, modalities, um, you might be able to express something that you wouldn't have um, through words because you're, you're engaging your senses. I can go back to that image of uh, the woman with the, with the lightning. Um, that's a perfect example of um, if this person had to sit in a group and just talk about who she is, she might have not been able to portray that sense in, in the body of what it feels like to be her. Um, because through the image, there's a somatic transference. So if I look at an image at a museum or, or in this case at this picture, I'm receiving information through my um, visual input and that's activating parts of my brain and I'm getting information about that. So that type of communication can be very powerful um, for people who are withdrawn or don't have access to the words or the way or the verbal communication. Um, the art process creates a lot of safety and containment. Um, for some individuals, telling a story through one or more expressive modalities can be more easily tolerated and may be a corrective experience in and of itself. So sometimes when I sit with clients and they're talking about their life or triggers or traumas, I can see how they're getting animated and activated. Their voice becomes um, louder or their um, speech becomes faster or they start uh, fidgeting a lot more and there's nothing really to help them ground in that process. But if we are engaging into something either through movement or through art making, then there's a, a, a uh, co-regulation that happens at the same time. And so that creates a lot of safety for the client because that's feedback for them and they have sometimes a bit more agency toward, um, over that process. In expressive arts therapy, self-actualization does not rely on the patient's ability to verbalize or even cognitively understand their own experiences. Another aspect of how it works, um, it's called also an action therapy. So expressive therapies are action therapies. Um, creating energizes and redirects attention and it alleviates emotional stress. It provides the opportunity to move through fight, flight, freezes states towards more embodied, integrated and mindful states. It reduces the sense of helplessness. It can reduce the sense of helplessness and increase the sense of mastery by responding to stress, um, to challenge and conflict rather than reacting to it. Um, skills, it provides skills to stay present no matter what arises and gives us an experience that we can trust. You've probably seen this image online. I borrowed it from the World Wide Web. We learn by doing. Brains are wired through hands-on interactions with the physical world. So this idea of mind-body, um, it's a big, it's a, it's a trendy word. <laughs> um, expressive therapy has been a mind-body um, therapy um, since it exists. Um, it, um, the reason why it's, in, it's because it's engaging the senses to affect change. Memories in particular have been reported to emerge through touch, imagery, or carefully guided through uh, carefully guided body movements. They are not not strictly limited to storage as verbal language in the brain. So a good example of that was uh, is um, I don't know if you've heard of authentic movement, but authentic movement is a form of movement that is 
allows um, people to connect with their um, authentic selves through move, through the practice of movement. So reconnecting with intuition and impulse, and um, it can be done in a very safe way. Um, but in this practice, a lot of times people will reconnect with uh, memories or um, it will provide awareness to a person on how they're relating to their movement in their body and what comes up. So something as simple as um, fighting gravity or rising from the floor can evoke something different in each person. Um, something like um, moving fast versus moving slow could evoke something different in different people. And these are the, these are kind. Of, this is information that can can happen and can be very powerful in a practice in expressive therapy practice. Even as simple as choosing material and arranging them offers the opportunity to redirect awareness to sensory information based processes involved in the action of art making. So um, this particular reminds me the work that I've done with elders. Um, so I've worked with patients with Alzheimer's and sometimes um, it can feel daunting to engage somebody who is very withdrawn and um, and, and um, might not have mobility or fine motor skills uh, accessible or e easily accessible. And um, the, 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 the action of choosing material and arranging them has been actually really powerful in the work that I've done with patients with uh, Alzheimer's. So something as simple as that um, will affect their ability to be animated and present and engaged and make eye contact um, and can really increase their um, quality of life. By activating and connecting different parts of the brain, we offer a new way to respond to stimuli. So um, when we are talking about change and we want to be able to see that change actualized, um, it can only happen if we're engaging the body in that process. And then and through that um, embodiment, we are inviting uh, uh, new options for for action. Body center psychotherapy is a kind of clinical work that puts the body into action as a means of accessing repressed and fragmented parts of the self. It operates on the premise that sensation, breath, and movement are the body's form of speech, and that if we listen to this speech, we can complete and release stored trauma, relearn how to feel excitement and pleasure, and engage in activities that nourish. This body speech often arises from the unconscious and from parts of ourselves that have become fragmented and from which we have withdrawn. It can manifest as aches and pains, chronic health conditions, postural and gestural habits, or unusual sensations. The last part of uh, expressive therapy that I wanted to um, point out was um, the use, how it uses imagination. The psyche consists essentially of images. It's a series of images in the trust, truest sense, not an accidental just, just, juxtaposition or sequence, but a structure that is throughout, that is thought, sorry, that is throughout full of meaning and purpose. It is a picturing of vital activities. This is from Carl Jung. Research indicates that unconscious systems of emotions can be at odds with the conscious intention we have for our lives. By entering into relationship with these systems, we seek out some way to integrate them into our life experiences. Expressive therapy allows us to materialize and enter in dialogue with these images and symbols and invites transformation by offering us the possibility for trying out inventive solutions. So in other words, part of the recovery or part of healing has to do with being able to reconnect and access parts of ourselves that we may have with need to withdraw from because of trauma or other reason, um, but we we need to be able to reconnect with in order to be able to move forward and 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 heal and recover. Here's an example of a um, um, expressive arts therapy session with a, a small young young um, person who was adopted and who had um, challenging attachment um, experiences. Um, it's um, 
So in this image, uh, I engage in an art to express a difficult feeling. Um, and the feeling was had to do with ha having witnessed somebody get hurt. And that usually would trigger um, a great a high state of dysregulation. And then it would just be addressed behaviorally and then nothing would be resolved. By, but by using expressive therapy, we were able to move forward. Um, the client here wrapped up the person, a person that she created in band-aids and created a special room that is safe for this person who got hurt. Um, the client was um, shut down when they arrived and uh, expressed powerlessness in the face of the incident. But after making this art, the client felt empowered and open to discuss the issue and didn't get dysregulated. I, I think that's probably the most important part of that. The creative process provided the client with the ability to problem solve and to soothe the difficult feelings that she was experiencing and with, with just enough emotional distance without getting disconnected so that feelings can be looked at safely and transformed through the action of creative expression. Oh, I forgot there's one more. <laughs> Another aspect of expressive therapy is community. So um, on the right side, it's a diagram um, from The Creative Connection, a bo book written by Natalie Rogers. Um, the Creative Connection process, I'll read what's at the bottom. The above diagram shows how, as we first journey inward through the expressive arts, we tap into the unconscious and become aware of new aspects of self, thus gaining insight and empowerment. Then by connecting to at least one other person in, in an empathetic and supportive environment, we learn ways to relate to the community. As we learn how to be authentic and empowered in a small community, we are then inspired to move to a larger circle. We become co-creative and collaborative, being able to access our higher purpose and powers. This connects us to the world, other cultures and nature with compassion. So like any other form of therapy, expressive therapy can be practiced in various ways, depending on the goal and why a person is seeking support. Some people may need a self-directed space where it's more open and they'll have more control over how the time is structured. Others may need more focus or have very specific needs or goals to achieve, in which case a therapist may offer therapeutic interventions as a mean to access new skills. It can be useful in building community or reaching specific clinical goals. So you might see music therapy in a hospital to help somebody who had um, a heart attack and lost speech, or you might see it in an early intervention um, to help a child develop you know, language. Or you might see it um, with uh, veterans who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder or from adults who have a history of trauma. You might see it um, in a session with a child whose parents are getting divorced and need a container to express what that story feels like. So there are very different ways to um, use expressive therapy and um, it, it, can, it, can, um, it can access many people. Here are some um, benefits um, and